Columbia County Historical Society, and uh, we welcome you to this event here at the schoolhouse. I thought I'd spend about three or four minutes just talking a little bit about the schoolhouse before I introduce our executive director. Uh, this building was not originally located here. For those of you who are not aware, at the intersection, maybe a couple of hundred yards just south, the northeast section, intersection of uh, Fisher Road and 9H, that's where the building was. That's where Jesse Merwin taught school. My father attended grade school here uh, in this building, as did several of my aunts and uncles. Uh, I grew up on Fisher Road, so I passed this building hundreds of times, and as a young kid, when it was a wreck, I was pitching rocks through the windows. Uh, then around 1950, when this was a term, historic preservation was not a term anyone had ever heard of before, my aunt, Marion Peduzzi, and a neighbor, Julia Fisher, who lived on Fisher Road. Fisher Road was named after the Fisher family, being the oldest family on the road. They decided that the, that the, that the building should be renovated and made into a community center. Well, this was unheard of. Uh, these were just two farm women. They had, uh, had to raise the funds, had to get the uh, volunteer labor, because there was no paint, the windows were broken, the doors were hanging off the hinges, it was really a wreck as was the Van Allen house right next door. Uh, no different, I used to play in that as a 12 year old when it was, a, we played pirates in that building and it was a total wreck. Uh, today they're both beautifully restored. Uh, in about a year, they had this building from being a wreck to what it looks like today and it's been always kept like that. And, when, and, and in 1952, when I was 12, Eleanor Roosevelt, who had a daily uh, uh, radio station, broadcast, broadcast the celebration of the renovation of this building to the entire country. And the next day on the front page of the Register Star, they had a, her picture leaving the broadcast after the building, after she had finished the, the broadcast in the building. And I'll put this on the table back here. And those of you who'd like to see just how, must have been the fall, I see everybody's wearing coats. But anyway, what I'd like to do is have uh, introduce our executive director, Lori Yarotsky, to come and present our, our uh, program for you today. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, for some of you um, may have been here as a fourth grader. Some of you, this is your first time. And we have um, some trustees here and our president, Jim Gudera is here, here. and our curator Anna Thompson is here. here and our curatorial assistant Kelly Smith is here and uh, for the year we've finished the fourth grade tours for now um, all the fourth graders in Columbia County are invited to come here as a school trip and learn about teaching before the di digital age. Now um, to tell you about the the marker, which the New York Folklore Society uh, awarded uh, this house and this property, um, they vetted some information that we knew of, of why the school was named Ichabod Crane. The, there was the Merwin family, and Jesse Merwin was the first school teacher in these parts. And the very first school was at the location that Bob described to you where the schoolhouse was, down the road. And it was a log cabin and Jesse Merwin taught there. And he taught there for about two years. And he lived on a farm further away, but he, during the week, there was a judge, Peter Van Ness, that lived in the mansion that's now Lindenwald, back that way. And during the week, because he taught Van Ness's children at the log cabin school down the road, he would stay with Van Ness in his house for a few days a week. And during that period, in, 19, in 1808, um, Washington Irving, who knew um, Van Ness from another, uh, from his family, from his brother, had come to visit the country from New York City and stayed at the Van Ness mansion and stayed in the same house with Jesse Merwin. So the two of them, after Jesse would get out of school from teaching in the afternoon, they would ride their horses, they would go fishing, and they stayed in touch with the correspondence for even 30 years later. And when, when Washington Irving went to visit his brother in, uh, in England, 
Afterwards, he wrote the story of Sleepy Hollow, and he remembered fondly the Hudson Valley and Columbia County, and he remembered the little schoolhouse, and he remembered the, little, the school teacher. And they were both in their late 20s when they m knew each other, and so they were young men, young intellectuals uh, in rural Columbia County. And uh, they, he thought of him when he wrote the character of Ichabod Crane. And as you see, we have a quote from the wall. Martin Van Buren has written in longhand his certification. Uh, Martin Van Buren was a friend of both uh, Washington Irving and Jesse Merwin, and he knew them both well. Um, we also have uh, a letter from uh, Washington Irving that he wrote to someone, which I'm going to read you really quickly. The only country acquaintance I've made here is a schoolmaster who teaches the neighboring children, pleasant, good-natured fellow with much native, unimproved shrewdness and considerable humor, as he is a kind of inmate at Van Ness's, and we have become very great friends, and I found much entertainment in his conversation. And he wrote that in a letter that year, which was actually 1809, and, and sent it off to a, a friend. So um, I'm going to introduce to you now Robert Ian McKenzie, the actor who is going to read the description of Ichabod Crane from Washington Irving's words. And thank you for coming. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Not far from the village of Tarrytown, there's a little valley in the high hills. A small brook runs through the valley, making a sound just soft enough to put a person to sleep. The whistle of a bird or the tapping of a woodpecker is almost the only noise ever heard. A dreamy feeling seems to hang over the land. Some say that there's a spell on the valley. It is true that the good people there often see strange sights and hear music and voices in the air. The valley is called Sleepy Hollow. In this peaceful spot, there lived for a while a man by the name of Ichabod Crane. He was a schoolteacher, and he looked more than a little like his name. Like a crane, he was tall, but very thin. He had narrow shoulders, long arms and legs, and hands that stuck a mile out of his sleeves. His feet could have been used for shovels, his head was small and flat at the top, with huge ears, large green glassy eyes, and a long nose. It looked like a weather vane was sitting on his skinny neck to tell which way the wind blew. Ichabod kept a good school. He only whipped the strong children. He never whipped the weak ones. He even played with some of the bigger boys after school, and he sometimes walked the smaller ones home but only if they had a pretty older sister. Ichabod Crane also gave singing lessons to the young people in the neighborhood. That's how he met Katrina Van Tassel. Katrina was the only child of a Dutch farmer. She was 18 and plump as a partridge. She had cheeks as pink as one of her father's peaches, and she wasn't just pretty, she was rich. When Ichabod went to see Katrina, he always looked at the farm first. His mouth watered. He just, just saw pigs. He saw every one of them with an apple in its mouth, ready to be cooked. All the pigeons were put to bed in a nice pie and tucked in with a blanket of crust. The geese were swimming in their own gravy. Every turkey that he saw was stuffed and wore a necklace of sausages. Ichabod Crane fell in love. <laughs> but there was another man who loved Katrina. His name was Brom Van Brunt. Brom was big. He was so big and so strong that everyone called him Brom Bones. Brom was good at all kinds of racing and fighting, but rough as he was, he had a good heart. Brom had four friends who went everywhere with him, playing tricks and having a good time. Whenever there was a loud noise in the night, 
People cried, there goes Brom Bones and his gang. All the men in the valley were afraid to talk to Katrina because of Brom Bones. Ichabod Crane was afraid too, but he was smart. When he visited Katrina's house, he pretended to be giving her singing lessons, but he was really telling her how pretty she was. Brom didn't like that. He wanted to fight with Ichabod, but Ichabod wouldn't fight with Brom. So Brom and his gang played tricks on the schoolteacher. They stopped up the chimney of his schoolhouse. <laughs> they, so when he made a fire, the room filled with smoke. They broke in at night and turned the place upside down. And Brom taught his dog to sing like Ichabod. <laughs> then one day, Ichabod got a note inviting him to a party at Katrina's house. He let the children out of school early. Then he spent hours getting ready. Finally, he borrowed a horse from a farmer. He wanted to look like a brave knight when he rode up to the Van Tassel house. The horse was an old workhorse. There wasn't much in him anymore except meanness. He was thin and shaggy with a head like a hammer. His mane and tail were tangled and full of sticks. One eye was blind, the other had the look of the devil in it. His name was Gunpowder. So, Ichabod rode Gunpowder to the party. Brombones came too on his fine black horse, Daredevil. Ichabod danced every dance with Katrina because he was such a good dancer. Brombones sat in a corner by himself. When the dancing ended, people started telling stories, ghost stories. Ichabod listened to them all and Ichabod believed them. That was one of the things about Ichabod Crane. He believed in ghosts. Most of the stories were about a ghost who rode a horse across the valley, a ghost without a head. Everyone in Sleepy Hollow knew about the ghost and some of them said they'd seen him. They said that he was a soldier whose head was carried away by a cannonball. His body, they said, was buried in the churchyard. The ghost rode out every night looking for his head. In the morning, he rode back to the church. He was known at all the country firesides as the headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. It was a very witching time of night when Ichabod started for home. All of the ghost stories came into his head. The night grew darker and darker. The stars seemed to go deeper into the sky. Sometimes the clouds hid them from his sight. Ichabod had never felt so alone. Suddenly, he saw something huge and dark in the shadows. Huge and dark and very, very scary. As gunpowder slowly moved closer, Ichabod saw that the thing was a man on a black horse. As Ichabod passed him, he started riding behind Ichabod, but he didn't speak. There was something awful about his silence. Suddenly, the moon came out from behind a cloud. Ichabod saw the man clearly. He had no head. Ichabod kicked Gunpowder to make him go faster. Gunpowder dashed away through thick and thin, stones flying and sparks flashing. Ichabod couldn't stop him. Ichabod's clothes flapped in the air. The headless rider stayed right behind him. His head was tucked beneath his arm. All Ichabod could think of was getting to the churchyard. That was the ghost's home. Just before the church, there was a bridge. If I can reach that bridge, he thought, I am safe. Just then, he heard the black horse close behind him. He even thought that he felt the horse's hot breath. Ichabod kicked Gunpowder and they thundered over the bridge. But they weren't safe yet. Ichabod looked back. The terrible ghost rider was standing in his saddle, just about to throw his head. He threw straight at Ichabod. Ichabod tried to duck, but it was too late. The horrible thing hit him with a crash. He fell to the ground and Gunpowder, the black horse and the ghost rider went on like a high wind. 
The next morning, the village people found gunpowder at his owner's gate, quietly eating grass. The school teacher was not at school. Later, they found Ichabod's black hat near the bridge. Close beside it was a pumpkin, all broken to pieces. Some say that Ichabod was carried off by the headless horseman. Some say that Ichabod left the village in the night, went to school to learn law, and became a judge. Brom Bones married Katrina and always laughed when anyone talked about the pumpkin. After that, there were even more stories about the headless horseman. And people say that on some nights they can hear Ichabod Crane singing in the hills around Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> the Norman Rockwell Museum and the Norman Rockwell Family Foundation for generously offering us the copyright for the use of the painting by Ichabod Crane from 1938 um, for a cutout. So they agreed to this specific use here. And uh, it's just perfect for selfies, <laughs> you think of that. Um, thank you. You may want to mention the hours. Yes, we will be open also posted in the back and on the website. This, this property and the Dutch house behind us here will be open regular visitor hours beginning July 1st, Saturday, July 1st through Columbus Day weekend, noon to four on Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday. So um, coming up soon. So today is just a special day for this um, building, for the dedication. Thanks. Thank you.